Hello, today we're going to talk about cycle commuting. Now, this is something uh, that get asks about. So, there, uh, I'm going to start that again. I don't do a bloop on it. Hello, today we're going to talk about cycle commuting, which is a subject I get asked about quite a lot. Theoretically, commuting, uh, and by commuting, what I mean is you know making short trips by bike, whether that's to work, whether that's to meet a friend for a coffee, whether that's to go to the theatre or a gig, should be the most accessible and straightforward type of cycling that you can do without any any real fuss. So we're just going to look at a few of the issues around that. As with everything, I'm not pretending I have all the solutions. These are just the things that I've worked worked out in my experience uh, of cycle commuting for the last, I guess, 30 years or so. Of course, the first thing you need when you're going to start cycling or when you're going to go cycling is a bicycle. I'm just going to talk you through a few of the things that I would say are important on a commuter bike. There's a whole uh, range of bikes out there that are available. And in my experience, I'd say there are certain features that are pretty essential to make your commute as comfortable and enjoyable as possible. So this is my uh, principal commuting bike, really. It's a white Sussex, sold as a road bike, but it's got enough different fixings on it that you can make it into uh, a commuter or even a light tour. If we just go through the different features that I would recommend on it. First of all, it's got disc brakes. So if you do have the option for disc brakes, then I would definitely go for those because it just gives you greater braking power um, and greater confidence, especially if you're going to uh, be cycling throughout the year and in wet weather. I would always recommend a pannier rack for carrying your gear, which we'll come back to uh, later on. And really important, mud guards, because you don't want to end up at your destination with mud and wet back splattered all the way up. Uh, your back. Beyond that, really, it's whatever kind of bike you, you feel comfortable with. I mean, you can see on this one I've put a lot of stickers on it to try to make it a little bit less attractive to bike thieves, which has worked so far. This is a, this is a drop bar bike, which not everybody's a fan of, but I also favour a bike mirror. I've also got a mount for a camera, which we're going to look at again in some more detail later on. Obviously, you need decent gears, especially if you're going to be riding up hills, but they're the basics. So, a bike you feel comfortable with, Good set of brakes, discs if possible, mud guards, and your rack, and the rest is, a, is purely your choice. So this is another bike that I sometimes use for commuting. It's a, a slightly different style. As you can see, we've got a flat bar, so you've not, you're not on the drops. It's not a racing style uh, when you're riding. It's a little bit more built for style, this one. It's by a company called Bobbin who make very, very pretty bikes, especially uh, women's bikes. So uh, if you're looking for something practical and stylish, I would recommend this company. Again, we've got the mud guards, <coughs> we've got the rack. This one's only got six gears on it, but that's plenty for, for nipping around town. So again, that's just another option of the type of bike you might want to get for commuting. So uh, the last type of bike I want to talk about is what I think is a really exciting development in cycling over the last few years, and that's e-bikes. So here we've got um, a Rally Pioneer e-bike. You can see there's a battery here, but you've also got the rack uh, to fix panniers on. You've got the mud guards, you've got all the things you need for a good commuter bike. And the great thing about e-bikes is that people can ride them, you know, if, they, if they're not confident about their level of physical fitness, they may have some kind of mobility issues that means that they struggle to ride a regular cycle. Or they may just be for people making trips by bike that they wouldn't make on a regular bike. You know, some people don't like e-bikes, some people say it's cheating, but I would say a car is cheating a lot more. I'd much rather people were riding e-bikes than driving around in cars. So this is just another option uh, for people, you know, who need that extra little bit of confidence or assistance uh, to get on a bike and start making short trips uh, on two wheels. I think you'll agree that this bike is also, a, you know, a particularly handsome looking bicycle, and I think that's something that is important for, for a lot of people. You know, it's, it's not just a mode of transport, it's also, you know, part of your personal style. So, yeah, I think this is something that I wholeheartedly recommend. Like many people, I live in a city. I, I live about five miles from the city centre. That's how far I ride to work. That's also pretty much where all the entertainment and social stuff is. And so the solutions that I'm going to look at today are really geared towards people who live in cities, people who have trips of, you know, around five miles, people who are going to be cycling for around 30, 40 minutes 
uh, to their destination. People with longer commutes, people who live in you know, more rural areas, they're going to face different challenges and they're going to need different solutions. But I think, you know, for many people who live in cities, there should be some useful advice in what we're going to look at today. Once we've sorted out um, the kind of bike that you're going to use, the next question that comes up a lot is what do you wear on the bike? Now for me, it's very simple. You wear what you would wear anyway. I would cycle to work dressed like this. Pair of jeans, t-shirt, jumper in the winter. That's because where I work, I don't need to wear any particular business wear and that's becoming increasingly frequent in people's jobs that they don't have to wear um, like a suit or whatever. So if that's how you work, you don't really need to think about clothing too much. If you do work in, a, in an environment where you have to wear a suit, take a new shirt in every day, which I used to do when I cycle commuted to a different job, what I found was um, if you take your suit in, leave your suit at work or have a couple of suits there for you to change into when you arrive, take a, sh take a shirt in every day rolled up like this and it won't crease and that's a really good way of integrating a cycle commute into a job where you have to wear proper business wear. So of course if you're going to be cycling throughout the year you're going to be facing different weather conditions. One thing that bothers a lot of people is arriving at work sweaty. Now if you have showers at work that's not a problem, you just hop in the shower the time you save cycling you've easily got the time to, to get a shower at work. If you don't have showers at work there are, there are still options for you. Whenever you're cycling anyway you should always dress assuming it's a couple of degrees warmer than it actually is because obviously you generate a bit of heat on the bike so make sure you're not dressed too warm when you go out if you do get a little bit sweaty, some people find you know, a little wipe down with baby wipes when they get there to be helpful. And another really, really good tip is cycle a little bit slower. You know, don't race everywhere. You know, you don't, it's, not, it's not a race getting to work. Um, you don't need to exert yourself excessively, which is my style of cycling is just very gentle and leisurely and unhurried. And I tend not to get too sweaty by the time I get to work. And there are other options that we've seen if you've got a long commute or if you've got lots of hills or you're worried about your your kind of physical condition, then you could get an e-bike just to take the edge off uh, some of the kind of more strenuous aspects of cycling. So there are lots of ways around, you know, arriving at work and being fresh when you get there. If we're going to look at cycling throughout the year, obviously we need to look at keeping warm in winter. So there, again, nothing particularly specialist. I just wear something like this, which is a standard, you know, padded coat. Keeps me warm on the bike. It's waterproof. You know, it does the job. And again, What's, you know, what's important for me is not to look as though, as though you've arrived on a bike when you get there, not to be dressed in loads of specialist gear. For me, the, the, the real brick of cycle commuting is to be able to get off the bike, walk into a, into a bar or a meeting, people have no idea how you arrived. So there are lots of different ways around that as well. Living in a place like Manchester, rain is a factor, people ask a lot about the rain. And one thing I always say, which is, which is the case, is that it doesn't actually rain for as long as people think. So you can often dodge the showers if you've got a bit of flexibility on when to leave. If you do have to go out in the rain, then there are different options around that as well. A couple of jackets here that we've looked at in other videos. So this is the Endura commuter jacket, which still looks a little bit like a cycling jacket with a pocket in the back, but it's good because it's got the reflective strips on. I mean, that, I would say that's a kind of you know borderline. You can you can. You can wear that as a jacket as well as a, as a cycling jacket. And there's this raffle one, which really just looks like, you know, an urban uh, cagoule type thing. And unless people know what raffle is, they have no idea that that's a cycling jacket. Another big uh, issue is what you wear on your head. Some people prefer a helmet if you, you know, if you don't want to look like you're in a race. You can get something like this, which is a skate style helmet, looks a little bit more kind of urban. If you prefer a kind of more leisurely style, I like a cycling cap. So we've got these from Waltz, that's just a nice cotton cap, stops you sweating on the bike, keeps the sun off your head and out of your eyes. And there's this particularly nice one, uh, which is made out of waxed cotton, which is also waterproof for those, for those rainy days. Another option for cycling in the rain is a cape. Now, this is one by Cleverhood, which I've had for a few years, but they're now available from lots of different manufacturers at lots of different price points. And these are absolutely brilliant on the bike because they keep you dry on your thighs as well as your torso and your head. Uh, you see this one's got a peak, so it's like a cycling cap. It's got water, um, reflective detailing on it. The only problem with a cape 
is that rain often is accompanied by wind and they do flap around quite a lot so before taking the plunge on a cape I would try and borrow one and see if it's right for you. A more traditional option of keeping your legs dry uh, is waterproof trousers. Now these, these are the ones I use, they're from Decathlon and I cannot praise them highly enough. They are perfect for the kind of commutes we're talking about, trips of you know five, six, seven miles. Uh, you don't get too sweaty in them. And the absolute <coughs> genius touch on these is that they have extra waterproof flaps that go over your shoes. So they extend all the way down from your from your waist to your toes and they keep you absolutely dry when you get you know when you get where you're going, you can just peel them off and you're bone dry inside. So another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, footwear because I mean again you can you can wear any kind of shoes you want when you're cycle commuting whatever you think is most suitable for you. I actually really like this brand 510 who make you know mountain they're, they're mountain bike shoes but they look like trainers they look like urban shoes they've got really grippy soles so they're great for pedaling you're never going to slip off your pedal these are the winter version which are waterproof and this is like a summer trainer and I, I would definitely recommend looking at looking at their range if you're you know if you do a lot of cycle commuting but you also like to have that kind of urban style as well Another consideration when you're doing cycle commuting or cycling around the town is how do you carry your stuff around because you know you don't just turn up at work with your with your wallet and your keys you obviously need other stuff a lot of the time so I mean a traditional cycle pannier like this Ortley pannier would do the job it's waterproof it's robust but if you can see inside it's just one cavity so all your stuff will just rattle around inside there so what I prefer to do is um, to find specialist urban cycling panniers and there are just a couple that I wanted to show here that I've been using recently there's this new looks one that we saw in the other video which is really like a standard messenger bag but it has pannier clips on the back lots of different compartments inside and it's a really really handy little bag uh, it's, this one isn't designed for carrying laptops in so I've just got a laptop so I've just got a new bag to put that in this is from good ordering I love the vintage styling on this so many pockets for all your tools and lights and straps and what have you and inside you've got lots and lots of different compartments for, for all the stuff that you might need to carry around so I would definitely recommend investing in a, a specifically designed commuter cycling bag because that, that will make your life a lot easier some people prefer backpacks when they're commuting I personally don't because that gives you an extra pressure point, an extra sweat point as well with the back, uh, backpack pressing on your back. I think if you're going to be on a bike, you let the bike do the work and that's my preference. So I would recommend looking into the pannier solution if you're going to be doing urban cycling. So another consideration is lights. If you're going to be commuting, especially in the winter, uh, you'll find that you're in the dark quite a lot of the time. Different options here. If you're doing urban cycling, uh, you don't really need a light to see by because you'll generally be under street lighting so you just need a light that will be seen I mean something like this these are the Aldi strip lights they tend to come in at about a tenner for a pair perfectly adequate for riding around in the city different modes flashing and constant different intensities I would definitely recommend those if you're on a budget moving up I'm rather fond of these Lazine lights I quite like the styling of them and they're very easy to attach with the fitting that just goes around a bar a very robust strap there again different modes um, and very easy to use all these lights are USB rechargeable so you're not faffing around with replacing batteries you just need to plug them in when you get to work um, just have a kind of USB socket there recharge your lights during the day and they're ready to go at home time Occasionally you might have a stretch of your route where you do need to light the way and so sometimes I will come back along a river bank and a forest trail if the weather's fine or if I've got the time so, it, so you can get a light like this that, that has a steady beam as well as a flashing mode. Uh, another thing that I use when I'm cycle commuting which is rather unfortunate but the conditions on the roads in the United Kingdom 
are not as good as they could be when you're cycling. So I run cameras. Um, I have one at the front, one at the back. The one I use at the back is the Cyclo Fly 6. So it looks like a bike light, but it's got an integrated camera. So you can see that it's a flashing light, but this thing here is actually recording everything that's coming up behind you. And that's a reasonably good camera for, you know, anything that's happening behind you that will, that will capture. And on the front I use this. It's quite an old camera, but I like the style of it. It's called a Garmin Verb. Unfortunately, they've redesigned this and it just looks like a GoPro now. Uh, but the great thing about this is it sits in a cradle um, and you can, if you need to, you can, just, you can easily get it out and just point it around if you see anything that you want to get on camera. Um, and that's why I like that one. So if you are looking at cameras, I don't know, I rec honestly recommend trying to get um, you know, one of the last few of these available. The Cyclos, um, Cyclics are good. They're quite expensive. Of course, GoPros. But that's a whole different that's a whole different video really uh, but unfortunately that's that's what we, we feel compelled to do another thing when you're commuting which is linked into what we're talking about with cameras is finding the best route now the best route for cycling in often won't be the best route that you would use when you're driving so over the years of commuting from Presswich into Manchester again it's about five miles I've got about maybe five or six different routes that I can use depending on how quickly I need to get in, what the weather's like, how much of a workout I want, you know some of them are a little bit more strenuous than others. Ideal route is pretty direct, it stays off main roads as far as possible, it uses you know bike lanes as far as possible. So it makes sense if you are going to start commuting to really plan your route in advance, you can get some help in a lot of cases from your local council cycling team. I know in Manchester they will come out and they will plan a route with you uh, if you want them to do that. There are also various apps that you can use. The best one is Cycle Streets. We'll put a link to that uh, where you can you can put a start and an end point and you, you, you can get the app to calculate the fastest and the quietest and then a kind of average of the two and that will show you ways of, of getting to your destination without being too involved in riding in traffic. Okay so that's that's pretty much a roundup of the stuff that I would recommend for cycle commuting. Now it looks like I've got quite a lot and there are reasons for that. One is that I've been doing it for a long time so I've been able to build up quite a lot of lot of things through my experience and just over time. You know another thing is I don't have a car, I choose not to have a car and the money that I save on not having a car I can spend on, on cycling things and other things um, which is incredibly, you know, fortunate, an incredibly fortunate position to be in. So it's important to remember that, you, you know, most of the stuff we're talking about is just, you know, a nice optional extra. And all, all, all you really need, if you're going to start cycle commuting or transport cycling, is a bicycle, you know, a set of waterproofs, some lights, and a means of carrying your stuff around with you. Yeah, and you can really do that on a budget. You know, you can get yourself a good second-hand bike, go to... Uh, one of your bike shops or a bike project near where you live and get some ge decent advice bearing in mind what we've talked about about the th things that you would need on a bike if you have waterproof clothes already they're probably fine on the bike just give them a give them a try out a set of lights won't set you back much and you can get a, you can get yourself a pannier pretty cheaply as well it's always worth looking out for the Aldi and the Lidl cycling promotions but they come round around twice a year uh, so they do one for summer cycling stuff, one for winter cycling stuff. And you can get yourself waterproof, you can get yourself panniers, you can get yourself tools, lights, those kind of things, really without breaking the bank. Another good option is uh, Decathlon. If you're looking at online, there's a website called Planet X where they do incredibly good deals uh, on a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about. So don't be daunted by the fact that I've shown you a lot of stuff. You really don't need most of it. Just get yourself, you know, the basics, get yourself out on a bike and just start enjoying your commute. That's my roundup of cycle commuting or transport cycling gear and issues. It'd be great to hear about your commute and your experiences of commuting, any stuff that you think I've missed, any stuff that, that you think other people might find incredibly useful. And if and you know if you would like to start cycle commuting but there are any reasons there are any barriers that you face to that then then please let us know and see how we can start addressing those as well <laughs>